In this video, we're going to look at some of the overall features and benefits for fabrication for AutoCAD MEP 2012 by East Coast. One of the things that we want to look at first is going to be the compatibility issues, being compatible with other platforms. That's why at East Coast we've developed this product right inside AutoCAD MEP. So our parts operate exactly as all other AutoCAD MEP parts. All the sticky grips work, the moves, the, the uh, stretches, etc. So you don't need object enablers or object viewers to see our parts as long as you're running an AutoCAD MEP system. This is a huge benefit over some of the other products out there. We also behind the scenes have what we call the part manager. Part manager is our user interface into the SQL server, which is the database that we use to populate the runtime catalogs in AutoCAD MEP. So from part manager, we set up fitting groups. So for instance, if we come and look at the bottom of the tab down here, you'll notice we've broken it into different groups for pipe and fittings, flanges, valves, fixtures, hangers, etc. So when I go back into one of these and I go back into pipe and fittings, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open up an elbow group. And so we've arranged this to where you can come over here and you can select a new group. As you select a new group, that's going to open up a group of elbows. As it opens the group of elbows, you're going to notice there's all different kinds of manufacturers in here. Okay. What we want to do is we want to filter this down to a smaller selection set. So all of these on the left hand side become filters. So if I come over here and say maybe I only want to see anvil fittings, I just go ahead and filter down to anvil and that's going to get rid of everything that's not an anvil fitting. Then maybe I want to filter down to malleable iron. So I can go to the material column and just come over here and say now I only want to see my malleable iron. So by putting a check mark in that, I filtered that down as well. We're going to go ahead and filter down a little bit more and say I want to go in here and I want to do maybe on down to only 150 pound class. And if I want to, I can even come in and filter down by size range. So maybe I want, only want to see one inch elbows, for instance. Now it's got rid of everything that's not a one inch, 150 pound, malleable iron uh, elbow made by Anvil. If I come over here and say I want to go to a 90 degree elbow right here, main per manufacturer, I'm going to filter it down even further. So if I move down here and just say I want it to come to a 90 degree elbow, there's a street elbow here, I want to just go to the right straight 90 degree elbow. Now I should only remain with one entry left because I've filtered it down. But now I can come over here and say I want to edit. If I want to add custom content, and I'll just do it to this one elbow. But if I come over here and go into my edit mode, and then I'll just say copy and paste. What that's going to do, that's going to create a copy of the elbow and allow us to change any of the pertinent data over here into the edit mode. We will not let you edit the original content, but as I click off of this one and click onto the original one, you'll notice how the new one is in bold, and that's how you can know that you can change any of the information and create your own custom parts. And that's how we create the custom parts within uh, Part Manager. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done and get back out of this, and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to turn off that elbow selection set here by just unchecking the box. So all the ones that are checked in here are the ones that are loaded into the runtime catalogs of AutoCAD MEP. Now moving into AutoCAD MEP, we can come up now into our Manage ribbon. As we come over here and we go to the Style Manager pull down, I'm going to open up the Pipe Routing Preferences. Within the Pipe Routing Preferences, you'll see a lot of them that start with EC. These are the ones that I've set up here for our particular parts, our routing preference. So if I go to the EC thread by weld routing preference and just come over here and look at say for instance at a T. When I go to the pull down on this to open up you'll notice at the top here is the East Coast Manufacturers Catalogs and here's all the manufacturer specific T's. Below that is your generic items that come with MEP. So we again run exactly the same as the MEP applications. So now when we're ready to start drawing, let's talk about some of the differences here. If I come into this system right here, this was drawn with out-of-the-box generic AutoCAD MEP content. So when I come over here and I click on an object, for instance, I, I hover over that and you can see that that's just a 4-inch short radius elbow. When I come over here and look at the extended data into that, it knows really nothing about those parts. There's no weld gap in between the elbow and the pipe, so it's just a straight-up butt weld joint. If I take that generic content though and say I want to select everything but the pump and then I come back to my design tab, I'm going to say I want to change that routing preference to the one we just looked at which was the EC thread by weld. 
as I do that is the system's going to go back through there and look at the fittings and replace them with the fittings I have selected in this routing preference. It also comes up and sees a flange and says, what type of flange do you want to use? So I'm just going to answer the question that I want to use a weld neck flange. That switched everything out for me. Now, as you'll notice here, there's a weld gap in between the elbow and the piece of pipe. So now I'm going to get an exact cut length on this piece of pipe that's going to be precise to what I need. When I click on this elbow now and I come back over to the extended data tab on the elbow, if you look down through here, you'll notice all the data that's filled out. Even the HPH item code for that elbow down to the weight of the elbow is 8.9 pounds because that's my well bend uh, 90 degree elbow schedule 40. So that was taking generic content and switching it over to manufacturer's content. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw with some of our manufacturer's content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pumps that I have over here. And I'm just going to say I want to go over here and I want to grab a hold of a pump. And I'm going to grab an intelligent grip that comes out of that pump. So if I do that, I want to come over here and I want to set that to my routing preference, which is going to be my thread by weld that we just looked at. And it knows the elevation. It knows all the information automatically for it right here. Okay. So if I bring that out and say maybe I want to come to that point right there and I want to come over here and go up to a certain elevation. Again, it says, hey, you need a flange here. What's your flange selection? And so now I'm going to say let's just take that straight up to 9 foot elevation. And then I'm just going to bring that over here and let's just say stop it at that location for now. I'm going to do the exact same thing out of this pump. I'm going to grab the grip. And as I grab the grip, I'm just going to come down here and touch onto the piece of pipe I want it to attach to. And it's asking me, okay, which T do I want to use? I have more than one that I've selected my Schedule 40 T that I want to use here. And which flange type do I want to use on that? So the system's smart enough to ask you questions if you don't have your selections made. Well, it says it found 11 ways to hook that up. And I'm going to say, well, show me some of those. So I'll just go through there and I'm just toggling through the different scenarios of how to hook that up. I like that selection, so I'm just going to hit A and accept, and that's hooked up for me there. Now I'm going to come off the other side of the pump by just grabbing a hold of the uh, intelligent grip here. And I'm going to say I want to just immediately go up to 8 foot elevation. As I do that, again, it's going to prompt me for the type of flange that I want, and I'm going to use my weld neck flange. Maybe I'll bring that over to here, and let's just say we want to stop that at about that point right here. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing off of this one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the grip. Say I want to immediately go up to 8 foot. So if I go over here and type in my 8 foot elevation, and pick the flange that I want to use. Now I'm going to come over here and say I want to tie right into this pipe right here. So it goes through there and it looks at the selections. It says, okay, here's one that I found. I'm going to say I like that one. I'm just going to accept that. And I'm hooked into that. But now when I want to continue these two runs, I can come back over here to my home tab and go to the parallel pipe routing preference. To where now I can say I want to run both of these pipes at the same time and maintain the spacing. So if I move those over here and go over to this location, and now I'll tell them I want to go up to maybe 15 foot, go up to the next floor. There I've drawn those keeping the same spacing using my parallel pipe routing preferences. So from that, let's say we want to start fabrication on these now. So I want to start doing some spools. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just go and open up our fabrication palette. Within our fabrication palette over here, I'm going to go over here and say I want to do a pipe spool. And I might come in here and say I want to add a new category. And this category I'm going to name is going to be my chill water supply. So I'll go ahead and say that's going to be my spool. Now that we've created our category, chill water supply, now we're going to go ahead and define some spools. So just clicking by clicking on the category and right clicking, I'm going to say I want to define spools, and it's telling me to select my pipe objects. So I'm going to say I want these objects to be in spool number one. So that's generated me CHWS001. If I come down and say define again, I'm going to say now this is going to be spool number two for me, and I'm going to include the flange here, and it's got that one spool. Again, I'm going to go back and define spool one more time. Say I want everything within this box right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select. And you'll notice that flange is selected. But I'm going to deselect the two pumps because I do not want the pumps in my spool. But now as I go ahead and I right click, you'll notice it only selected these objects because it knew that already belonged in spool one. And we'll go ahead and we'll do one more spool by saying we want everything within this box right here to be spool number four. We'll go ahead and right click that. Now we have four spools defined. So from that, I'm going to come over here now and say I want to generate those four spools. So I'll let that go ahead and generate a spool drawing for each one of those spools. And now I'm going to come over here and say I want to open one of those. So let's open the first spool. So if I just simply come down here and select open, that's opened it into my drawing template file. And we've got here the part numbers on it. We've got here the exact cut lengths of the pipe on it right here. All my fittings listed out, etc. Now if we look at this though, 
This piece of pipe right here, part number two, we want to look at that. And part number two here is one foot ten and an eighth cut length. I'm going to come back in and close that spool drawing, and I'm going to go back into my model, and I'm going to make some changes. So let's say somebody had called in and said, this pump has been moved here. So I'm going to grab the grip over here, and I'm going to say, that, move that pump over six inches to the left. You'll notice everything's stretched. When I come back over here to my spools now, I'm going to click onto that and say, run a verify for me on those spools. When I run the verify and I hit the F2 command to open the window, it says it's completed, but see the log errors for details. There were some errors. So when I come over here and open up my error log, it tells me I've got parts were modified in spool number one and spool number three. So I'm just going to close that and say, now I want to go back through there and I want to update those spools. So I'm going to click on number one and just say update it. That does an update and it gave me a revision number one on that spool and I'm going to do the exact same thing on spool number three. Now when I go back to open up spool number one, and we come back in there and we look at that, and we're going to look here at part number two again. Now you can see part number two is now two foot four and an eighth because it's updated that to the change that was made in the model. And that's how we can go through there and add revisions and updates to those spools. Now back into the spool drawing here, let me just open that back up one more time here. These spools are created off of a template, and this is just a viewport. So if I want to come over here and I want to change the view of that spool, I have the ability to flip that to a different view, a different visual style, and then say reattach the part numbers back to it. I can also customize any of the schedules to get any additional data that I want into the schedules and of course the title block. Whatever I want to put into that is up to the user himself. So they're very customizable spool drawings. Another thing I wanted to talk about in here is hangers. If I come back over here and I'm going to place some more pipe, and let's just say we're going to run some, with some 4-inch pipe here at 15-foot elevation. So I'm just going to take this over a couple of times and, and place it down. Now that we've run the pipe out, let's go ahead and select some hangers to place on there. So I'm just going to go up here and select my hangers, and I'm just going to follow the command prompt on the bottom of the screen. Select the pipe to put the hangers on. So as I go ahead and select that. It brings up the dialog box for me where it's automatically picked my 4-inch hang hanger here for my pipe. I'm going to be hanging from an elevation. I'm going to change this to say I want to hang from 19 foot elevation. I want distance of 8 foot between the hangers and their unlimited quantity. But I can also go over here to extended data and say I'm going to need an insert at, for the upper attachment on each one of these hangers. Maybe I'm going to need spring vibration isolation on these. So we can fill out any additional data that we need here that will become schedulable, but it won't actually model. But you'll be able to extract the information out of the model. So as I go ahead and hit OK now, it's going to go ahead and place those hangers down in my model. So if I come back and take a look at a section of these by going to the object viewer, I'm going to flip this into an object view here and just look at the hangers that we placed on here along with the rod. So those were all placed. If I come back now and say, I want to run some gravity pipe with this, so I want to run some sloped pipe. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change routing preference to, let's say, no hub. So if I come through here and say, I'm going to run some no hub, and we'll go ahead and say we're going to run a different size. Let's run six inch, and we're going to run it at the same elevation. But this time I want to come in here and I'm going to have a slope in it, and I'm going to put a negative quarter inch slope on that. So when I go to run this pipe, I'm also going to have it break this pipe up at 10 foot sections here as I run that. So as I break that up, it's going to automatically insert my couplings that I need here. And of course in gravity pipe, the hanger spec is different because you've got to hang either side of a flexible coupling. So when I come back to select my hangers on my gravity pipe and slicked onto that, I get the same dialog box pop up, but I'm going to change this right here to gravity pipe and say I'm going to go ahead and just put this on here at this spacing. I'll say I want this to be, let's say at 10 foot spacing, and we want to hang a foot from each joint. So I go ahead and hit OK now, and it places my hangers in here for me. We'll notice that those are placed one foot either side of each flexible coupling. So these will have all separate rod links on them. So if I come over here now, and I'm going to go up to my uh, command here, pipe classify, and say I want to classify all of this pipe. What pipe classify does allows me to separate the rod from the pipe. And now I'm just going to say I want to schedule all the data for all the pipe in here as well. So I'm just going to type in all here and let it go ahead and, and make that selection. So now when I come back over to my palette and I want to go and run my schedule, I can just come over here and say I want to go to my EC tools. And over here I should have a schedule for my hanger rod. So I'm going to go over here and select the hanger rod here and bring that in. And that's brought in for me each different cut length of all the hanger rod. 
I can get any schedule out of the drawing that I choose to, and these are customizable. If I want to come back here and say I want to get a, a, all the pipe links in the, in the drawing, I'm just going to come over here and grab the entire drawing here, and now I've got a schedule of every cut length of every piece of pipe within this drawing here. Okay, And these are all totally customizable by you, the user, as well. So to recap this, we can take and we can bring in custom parts, from any manufacturer right into AutoCAD MEP and they behave the exact same way as all MEP parts. We're able to convert existing MEP content to real manufacturer content, cr create schedules, spool drawings of these, insert the hangers, and then we're also able to take this and we're able to export that file out to Tremble to pick up the points for the hanger to, so the GPS can locate that. Another function that we have within Fabrication for AutoCAD MEP by East Coast is the fact that we're open architecture and we can download a XML file to any estimating system that's willing to pick it up. So to do that, what we're going to do here is we're just going to come over here and we're going to select on the Estimate tab over here. And I'm going to come over here and say I want to attach data to the drawing. So if I go through there and run the Attach Data and then right-click on that, it's going to come up and give me my work breakdown structure. So I can put in here, okay, my job is going to be, let's say in this case it's going to be embassy. And then I would say, okay, it's the first floor. Maybe it's the zone we're going to say here is the guest tower. And again, you can just enter in whatever information you want. And I've got a 1.0 labor factor, which I'm going to say is okay. As I say okay to that, it assembles that for me over here into my estimate tab in a tree structure. But I can come over here and say I want to change that to a grid, and I want to rearrange the, the uh, breakdown of this. So maybe I want my job to be my first and foremost top level. Then I want my, uh, let's say, my zone to be second. Then I want the floor to be third, let's say. And then I want the labor factor to be fourth, and the notes to be next. So I've assembled that. So when I go back to my grid structure now, my, or my, excuse me, my tree structure, you can see how it's assembled. But I can say, well, you know, maybe there was some of this that was some really high work. So I want to come back over here, and I want to take, and I want to identify what I've already taken off, what I've already pulled out of the drawing. So I'm going to go over there and select the top level of that. Then I'm going to go to my color palette and say, I want all of this to be, let's say, yellow to let me know that I've taken everything off in that drawing, it's going to turn everything yellow. But now I come back here and say, well, you know, I want to attach some more data to this information up here. So if I go Attach Data, and I'm going to select it, and now as I right-click and enter, I get my work breakdown structure again, but it's the same job, it's the same floor. I'm going to say it's, it's not the same zone. I'm going to say this is going to be in the atrium or, or whatever we choose to identify that differently. And I'm going to adjust my labor correction factor up by 25%. And I'm going to put in my notes because that was 30 foot above the finished floor. Now as I go ahead and say OK on that, and I come right back in here and I just click down here on my labor factor here. It highlights that. And I'm going to say I want to mark that in red because I highlighted that as high work and adjusted my labor factor on that. So I've color coded my drawing and I've picked all this information off and now I can just simply go right here and say export the estimate data and that will send that out to select estimating systems that will import this data. And that concludes an overview of AutoCAD MEP fabrication by East Coast 2012.